come out recently, scientific papers, that have tried to emphasize the fact that Chagas disease is no longer a disease that is a problem in South America. The disease itself is spreading as people move and colonize different um, countries around the world. Chagas disease is now a worldwide challenge, a challenge initially for clinical management because doctors in, say, Australia, if someone goes in with these vague gut symptoms, as Charles Darwin had, and won't have a clue, won't think about Chagas disease if they appear 20 years after the person contracted it. And here we see that this is just um, um, indicating how many cases of Chagas disease occur in countries other than South America. And in Australia, there's even a, a Chagas disease society in Australia whose main aim is to try and raise awareness amongst the general medical profession. And um, this was a, a meeting that WHO organised in Japan last year. The main aim of this meeting was to ask questions not only about clinical management of Chagas disease in countries outside Australia, in countries outside South America, but do countries like Australia have the insect carriers, the vectors, that could transmit Chagas disease? So what's the relevance of Chagas disease to Australian wildlife? Well, the concern is, is are our, our wildlife susceptible to infection with Chagas disease? Chagas disease, as I said, is caused by trypanosomes and trypanosomes are ubiquitous in Australian native mammals. Virtually every native mammalian species has its own species or more than one species of trypanosome. And the interesting thing is that the trypanosomes that we have in our native wildlife here in Australia are genetically very, very similar to what causes Chagas disease in South America. Here's one of the species of uh, trypanosome that we found. These are in betongs in um, Woylie in Western Australia. And the big question is, is are our marsupial um, trypanosomes, are they capable of being pathogenic? Now, the reason I say this is because, you know, the concern about Chagas disease may be affecting our um, native animals. Um, the native rats living on Christmas Island have died out. And an article in 1996 speculated, could it be because of trypanosomes introduced onto Christmas Island by domestic rats, Rattus rattus. And very interestingly, a couple of years ago, um, a group using ancient DNA techniques actually got some museum specimens of native rats that had died on Christmas Island and showed that they were infected with trypanosoma lewisii. They could amplify the DNA from capillaries on the, from the skin of these, um, um, these animals. And Trypanosoma lewisii is normally a parasite of the domestic, well, the rattus rattus. So that shows that our native animals are susceptible potentially to disease from these trypanosomes. In WA at the moment we're seeing a massive decline of this beton called the, the woily. And they're very difficult, it's very difficult to get dead bodies of woilies because when they do die in the bush they're quite quickly scavenged by birds and feral cats and foxes. But this one was brought into our veterinary school. It was given a very good thorough post-mortem by one of our pathologists who showed that some of the lesions in this dead woily were very similar to what is seen in cases of human, um, humans infected with Chagas disease which is very interesting. So coming back to the, the question, do we have carriers or vectors in Australia that could transmit Chagas disease? Chagas disease is normally transmitted by these horrible black bugs. And if you read Darwin's um, Origin of Species, he talks about these things lying in bed at night being bitten by these horrible tripermid bugs. We have these in Australia. But there's hardly any research being done on these bugs to determine whether they're similar to the ones that we found, find in South America. A few years ago, um, they did show that there was a species they thought was called Triatoma leopoldi in northern Queensland, which is also found in South America. So there's a big question there. Uh, do we have the carriers in Australia? So finally, I want to finish with another pretty gross disease called Leishmaniasis. The causative agent is again another type of trypanosome again like T. 
Trichomosoma cruzi, Chagas disease, the parasite lives within cells of the body, in the body. A variety of different um, disease syndromes can eventuate depending on the species of parasite. Um, you can get lesions which can heal spontaneously to other lesions that behave very like leprosy. But also, the parasite, some parasites can affect the internal organs. It really is a deadly, devastating parasite. Again, until recently, a fairly restricted geographical distribution. And on this map, which is um, found in a very recent um, edition of Exotical Diseases, you don't see any Leishmania in Australia or Southeast Asia. But just recently, there were human cases over the last few years found for the first time in Southeast Asia, initially in Thailand. So it's an emerging issue in our region. Um, these were cases in people that had never left Thailand. This is a, a dog that was, um, came to WA from Portugal. Two years later was presented to our small animal clinic, um, our small animal clinician, Peter Irwin, who had an interest in some of these um, parasites that affect the bloodstream, thought the symptoms were suspicious, did a thorough workup and showed that this little poodle, who had been imported from Portugal two years previously, was in fact, in fact infected with Leishmania and a pathogenic form it, un uh, it undoubtedly contracted in Europe. Um, Leishmaniasis, or the, um, the disease, is um, very common throughout the Middle East where our troops are fighting, Afghanistan, Iraq, and there have been cases in Australian and US soldiers of Leishmania. So it's coming in to Australia all the time um, and also in tourists as well. So imported cases into Australia from overseas in humans and pets. Is this an issue? Well, from the clinical management point of view, not, probably not because it can be diagnosed fairly readily. But what about transmission? We don't have sand flies that can transmit Leishmania in Australia, so we are told, but no one's really looked properly. Leishmania has, however, now been found in kangaroos. A group in the Northern Territory have found Leishmania that may well be the original Leishmania in kangaroos in the Northern Territory and some other macropods, species of macropods. It's a unique form of Australian Leishmania. And as you can see, when it was initially found, the press got hold of it. Where was the emphasis on humans in this Leishmania? Not the poor kangaroos. Although, undoubtedly, it's the parasites achieve a very good host-parasite relationship and the only lesions that could be found were some superficial skin lesions in the kangaroos. So, as I said, no sandfly vectors in Australia, but a group in the Northern Territory um, have shown a unique vector of Leishmania. This day feeding midge is probably, undoubtedly, one of the vectors for Leishmania in our native animals. So what this means is that in Australia we do have a vector that could transmit the pathogenic forms of Leishmania that are coming into Australia with increasing frequency. What are the implications for that? Again, it means that our wildlife could be susceptible to nasty exotic pathogenic species what could be the clinical impact on the wildlife? But also it could mean that our wildlife, our innocent wildlife, could, be, could estab be established as reservoirs for this exotic disease. I'll finish there. Thank you.